on Prince William. He's been in South Africa this week for the Earthshot Awards. We did touch on it uh, last week in anticipation of, but can you run us through it? Yes, so he's been in Cape Town to award nearly $2 million per person to five well-deserving winners, innovators in eco uh, welfare and sustainability and tech and science and everything else and it's a cause very close to his heart because it's not as though he's come to the whole eco sustainability thing as a, he's jumped on the bandwagon he's very passionate about it and he had a meeting with 120 of these leaders and he said to them this is the future king he said to them you are the future you are the leaders you are the people who are going to make a difference in this world so you can just imagine being one of those young people and seeing the future king and having him say those words to you and have that faith in you that you can progress your eco sustainability and all your projects and your fantastic programs that you're doing. So I think um, William, he was well in his comfort zone there and it was great that he was able to get that message globally and give us a hint as we've discussed of what he will be like as king. These are issues that he will still continue to bring to the fore, I think. And I think Africa, of course, is... Um, a place he's very comfortable with. In Kenya, of course, he proposed to Kate all those years ago. His mother obviously did a lot of work over there. Harry's been there too. Um, and, of course, you would have seen he was wearing a beautiful little um, friendship bracelet which his children had made for him. So he had that tie back to the UK while he was in Cape Town. So a fantastically successful trip for him yet again. And speaking of that, we've got a great video uh, of Prince William talking about his kids and showing off uh, that bracelet. This is a this is a I think a, a relic, if you like, from uh, a Taylor Swift concert that my daughter uh, decided that she wanted to create a bracelet for, and um, she gave it to me when I came away. So I've, uh, I promised I'd wear it and try not to lose it uh, while I was out here. And Pandora, this continues on from from our previous point. This sort of openness, I think, does uh, the prince and the royal family a, a wonder of credibility with the public. Yeah, I think any parent in the UK, if they've got a young daughter, has got the swift madness going on. I think that's also the same for you guys, right, um, uh, across the pond. And I think also we saw that picture, didn't we, um, of Taylor Swift uh, with, uh, with, the, with the children when she did have the concert in London. And I think it's so sweet that even despite William uh, speaking about some very serious subjects, which of course Louise already noted, he's evidently very passionate about and very much follows in his father's footsteps in this about the environment. But the fact is he's away from his children at an incredibly difficult time where their mother is going through something which is utterly uh, tremendous on so many different levels and she's been so open about it and despite this he still has the link back to them just to sort of note that if they do see daddy on tv or wherever they might be seeing him that there will be that bracelet there and he has to be so open um with the public at such a difficult time and i think this just goes to show again just how human he is how relatable he is as a parent as well um and actually i just think it just goes to show how much love that he has for his children and he's not afraid despite his position to be so open about that in trying times which is really lovely to see yeah, I think it's commendable, that sort of openness, and I think it's something that we probably haven't historically seen in the royal family. But also this week, the first joint appearances for the Sussexes for some time. We've got some video. We are at a crossroads where the urgency to reassess and redefine our approach to protecting children has become increasingly evident. While the necessity has always been apparent, it is now time to translate that awareness into meaningful action. So we thank you all for your attention to this critical issue. My husband and I recognize today's reality is marked by greater connectivity and advanced technology, which of course has many positives, but which also compels us to better understand how digital violence against children is manifesting itself in this age. Louise, what was this uh, statement in aid of? This video is tied into a inaugural conference being held in Colombia um, tackling digital violence against children, which Megan kind of referenced then. Of course, they were in Colombia in August this year, which was a bit of a controversial trip. There was lots of um, criticism about it being a faux royal trip and why were they there? But 
despite all the criticism around it, I do feel they really have honed in on a very good cause here, which is protecting children in the digital space. And, in fact, Harry went further to say that he doesn't believe the laws and the legislation globally actually keeps up with what's been, what kids are being subjected to. And there's plenty of loopholes where predators, and perhaps he's even addressing social media companies per se, where there's a lot of commercialisation of abuse of children online. And now is the time to actually do something about it. There's been lots of chat. Here's the big conference we're having in Colombia. So they've joined forces after a very separate strategy between them um, to actually push that cause, which is a good one, I have to say. And look, our, our political landscape here in Australia at both state and federal levels is, is looking at uh, legislation for that very point right at the moment. But Pandora, um, it did look a little strained and stayed, don't you think? Yeah, look, it's an honourable cause and the fact that they're speaking out about it on a global platform, I don't think we should we should really be, you know, uh, saying anything negative about that. But I also do think it does highlight the fact that perhaps people are still a bit confused about Harry and Meghan. This is the first joint appearance they've had in a while. Harry's very much been doing his own thing, solo events. So has Meghan. Now they're coming back together to talk about this. What causes do they really want to focus on? Of course, they have spoken about this cause before in the past. Is this the cause that they're now going to champion? But, of course, they're also wearing remembrance poppies, which I think is great, and I think they should be doing. But it was only a few years ago that they were at the Cenotaph as well for the Remembrance Day, and that is today for us. So I think it's great. I think it's honourable. But I also think people are still really confused about their brand. And I think it also goes to show and highlight what's next for Harry and Meghan. It's great they're talking about this, but are they going to carry on talking about this and focus in on this now? What are they doing next? I think if I was their PR, which they have changed notably uh, quite a few times, I would be thinking, what's the strategy now? Can they do this forever? Mm. Is it sustainable? Yeah, and Pandora, still with you, we understand from reports this week that apparently Megan didn't take too well to some fiery comments made by magazine editor Tina Brown a couple of weeks back. What was the report and is there any basis to these claims? Yeah, so the former Vanity Fair editor said on the podcast that Meghan had the worst judgment of anyone in the entire world. I think that's a little harsh, given everything which is happening in the world at the moment. I, for one, could probably come up with a few personal opinions myself, but I don't think this is the right place to say <laughs> that, ladies. Um, but listen, um, Meghan gets a lot of heat when she does do anything and that is coming from somebody who reports on the royals no matter what she does there will always unfortunately be people who don't agree with what she does or what she says and i think that is important to note but there'll also be people mm. who agree with absolutely everything and gives her no criticism whatsoever so look do i think that these reports <laughs> are going to hold up as this is just one of many royal commentators when i have spoken to people i'm not quite sure about that um but megan has said herself that there is a lot of external noise and she doesn't listen to it so i'm not quite sure on this however what i would say is that megan does need to listen or her advisors need to listen to the public opinion if they want any way back to the royal family or to the uk in the future and perhaps some of these comments and opinions do need to be heard to a certain extent. Perhaps not this one, but I also think they need to be fair and balanced. Mm -hmm. You've got to take the positive with the negative, and unfortunately, when you're on a public platform, some criticism does need to be made sometimes. And I think that's a very fair observation and a great way to end. Louise Roberts-Pandora Forsyth, thank you so much for joining us.